we'd like to invite up our next um, speaker. Um, I'd like to uh, invite up and welcome uh, Dr. Krishnan. Dr. Krishnan is a uh, cardiologist. Good evening, everybody. Um, I'm Uma Krishnan, and thanks for this opportunity. This is my second year speaking here about um, the benefits of plant-based diet for cardiac health. So uh, I think the reason I get to go first is we all know prevalence of heart disease. Heart disease, which includes stroke, obviously myocardial infarction is the number one cause of death in the United States, killing nearly 787,000 people alone in 2011. Uh, it, it claims more lives than all forms of cancer combined. And the other important thing is both the direct and indirect costs of heart disease is more than 320 billion. That includes health expenditures and lost, of, lost productivity. And my personal passion and specialty is about women and heart disease. And heart disease is the number one killer for women. And it, one in three American women dies, uh, 31 women dies from breast cancer each year and one in three dies because of heart disease. And uh, we'll be going through some slides where it shows a plant-based diet is very helpful in women in helping prevent heart disease. And uh, Mr. Rose had already mentioned that it is very helpful in women. So when we talk about heart disease, the most important thing we need to understand is atherosclerosis. So over time, fatty deposits called plaque builds up within the arteries and we call it atherosclerosis, and when it starts to become narrow, it's called, uh, uh, it starts to cause angina, and when there is not enough blood going through, we call it coronary artery disease. So this is just a pictorial diagram showing where it starts, and then over a period of time, there is plaque building up, limiting the luminal blood flow. And one of the things we found was, plaque starts to build very early on in life, I don't think I have that slide here, but plaque can start to build as early as two years of age. And that is why it is very important for us to learn uh, a healthy diet starting as early in, as possible. So when we talk about cholesterol, where does it come from? So there are two sources of cholesterol. So most of my patients usually will be like, you know, my husband eats the same food, I eat the same food, his cholesterol looks good, my, mine doesn't look good. And that is where we need to know 65% of the cholesterol is related to the genetics. So liver and other cells throughout the body produces 65% of the cholesterol, and 35% is what we consume. So exogenous sources, all food, foods containing animal fat and meat products have cholesterol in them, not from plant-based diet. And so cardiovascular disease affects the brain, ischemic stroke, it can ca cause vascular disease, it can cause coronary artery disease. So when we are in the cath lab, after somebody has not taken care of themselves, as Mr. Rose was saying, the picture on the left-hand side shows a high-grade lesion, what we would say is at least 90, 95% ruptured plaque for which the treatment at that point is going to be a stent. So uh, we have certain risk factors, and we are going to talk about how plant-based diet can help modify these risk factors. Things that we cannot change are going to be our age and family history. Things that can be modified are the cholesterol, smoking, high blood pressure, and we have a speaker on diabetes and uh, obesity. So the question here is, will going vegan, vegetarian, reduce the risk of heart disease? And, I've, and I think we all might have read the good book about forks over knives. So what is a vegetarian diet? It includes food from plants, fruit, vegetables, legumes, grains, seeds, and nuts. The main advantage is it's lower in total fat, mainly saturated fat and cholesterol than the non-vegetarian diet. So plants essentially contain no cholesterol so that 35% that you saw earlier, which is the exogenous source, you can easily avoid adding any additional cholesterol to the system. And the added advantage we'll see in later slides is it's high in fiber. So animal products contain substantial amount of fat, particularly saturated fat. So what does it do? It makes the liver produce more cholesterol, which is the LDL, or what we call the 
low density or the lousy cholesterol. So when I was trying to look up uh, information, it was kind of a glaring statistics that showed up. Less than 1% of US adults meet the American Heart Association's definition of healthy diet. So I think we have a lot to do there. And reducing sodium and increasing whole grains and eating more fruits and vegetables have been the biggest challenges. So uh, Kim Williams is the previous president of the American Association of Cardiology. And he had said very nicely, wouldn't it be laudable goal of the American College of Cardiology to put ourselves out of business with a generation or two? Basically, he's saying that if everybody decides to eat healthy, go vegan, vegetarian, we are going to reduce heart disease, and probably we'll be all, or I'll be losing my job. So, so we'll start looking into some of the research studies. So this, I think, was one of the really good landmark study. So this was published in 1960. And they, there were 100 patients done by Lester Morrison. He had 50 pa 100 patients had coronary atherosclerosis. 50 patients were advised to have a moderately low-fat vegetarian diet, and another 50 just followed the regular diet. So they were all followed for 12 years. By the end of 12 years, 19 of the 50 patients treated with the diet survived. That was a 38% surveillance. Of the control patients, everybody was dead. This is very important because this was in 1960. There was neither stent. Stent came into existence in 1992, like with a drug, uh, and then later on with drug. There was no cabbage surgery, and there was no cholesterol-lowering drugs at that time. And the only treatment that was available was to modify your diet and um, exercise. And this, I think, is a very notable finding. And then we all know about Dean Ornish. This is the Dean Ornish program for reversing heart disease. And um, he's a professor of, uh, uh, re, uh, he's down in uh, Sausalito, California. And he had a great trial. Can lifestyle changes reverse coronary artery disease? And uh, he has a scientifically proven uh, way of doing this. So this is the gist from that particular study. So this had only 48 patients. 28 were in the regular group, 20 were in the control group. They were all followed for five years. They were given a low-fat, whole food, vegetarian diet, and less than 10% came from fat. They were subjected to aerobic exercise, stress management, and smoking cessation. So at the end of one year, if you look at it, they were able to show regression. They did angiography both at baseline one year and five years, and they were showing, able to show that there was regression of stenosis. The other important thing to look there was the LDL reduction. Even within one year, there was 37% redu reduction in the LDL, and there was 6% in the control group. Five years, number of events were much less in the uh, experimental group compared to the control group. So uh, overall, 82% of the experimental group patients had an average change towards regression. So he concluded saying comprehensive lifestyle changes may be able to bring about regression of even severe coronary atherosclerosis even after only one year. And in his case, he did not use lipid lowering agents. But if we add that along with the diet, I think we can make people live longer and with uh, less uh, angina. So this is not just here. There is a study called Mount Abu study. This was start, done in India, 123 patients. Same thing, they looked at 300, more than 300 coronary lesions. 91% of patients showed a tendency to regression. And uh, more than 51% regressed by more than 10 absolute points. And this is a study by Esselstein. And this is a picture showing back in 96, where the distal LAD had plaque buildup. And by 99, just following a plant-based diet, he was able to show there was some reversal of uh, coronary artery disease. So his conclusion from that particular study was a physician can influence patients in decision to adopt a very low-fat diet that com com in combination with lipid-lowering agents can reduce cholesterol levels to below 150 milligrams per deciliter and uniformly result definitely in arrest or reversal of coronary artery disease. 
and a couple of other studies, Epic Oxford study showed that vegetarians had a 32% lower risk of having heart disease. This uh, pa patients were followed for long periods of time, like this study had 11.6 years, and this was more than 44,000 men and women living in England and Scotland, and blood pressure was recorded, and uh, they showed 32% lower risk of heart disease. Probably what is the reasoning behind it? We talk about LDL, there is a non-HDL cholesterol that also helps uh, prevent plaque rupture and also by reducing systolic blood pressure. And then there are a couple other studies I want to just touch upon. One is about heart failure because we are talking about coronary artery disease. Heart failure, also there was a study published by Pischke et al. in the European Journal of Heart Failure in 2007 which showed low fat vegetarian diet uh, should be recommended for people who are at risk for heart failure. And then the other uh, study that was really uh, interesting was reduction of angina. Because the biggest challenge we feel here is, one, we have to make people live longer, and the other thing is about symptoms. Trying to get angina under control has been a very difficult task, and here they were able to show in 100 patients just being on, uh, like on the standard therapy plus a low-fat vegetarian diet 12 weeks, 74% of the patients were angina-free. And this was published in the American Journal of Cardiology in 2008. The other important thing we always like is cardiac rehab. So patients either have had an event, either they got a stent or got bypass surgery, they are all referred to cardiac rehab. So here, all these patients are already motivated. They are going to follow their whatever their physician prescribes, they are going to be exercising, everything. So they said, okay, let's do a little thing here, let's add low fat vegetarian diet and then leave the other one to the standard like the American Heart Association or whatever other diet and combined with stress reduction. They were able to show that there was decrease in anginal frequency, BMI, total cholesterol, body weight, systolic blood pressure, LDL and on top of that they were able to show 80% reduction in depression in 12 weeks. Heart disease and depression goes hand in hand. And my, my see a lot of women after an, a coronary event being depressed. And I think this is very important where low-fat vegetarian diet can also help with uh, depression. And improvement was maintained at least for one year. So let's look into a little bit more science. So cholesterol-rich LDL fraction is responsible for the atherosclerotic plaque. And oxidized LDL is preferentially taken up by the arterial walls. And this is the one that leads to plaque formation. So this is just a pictorial diagram. And what has been shown is, uh, in the cardiovascular research is, there is evidence that the LDL cholesterol in vegetarians is much less oxidizable. So this is why their chances of forming a plaque becomes less because it is less oxidizable. The other one we always talk about is endothelial function. Nitric oxide is essential to vascular health. They won the Nobel Prize winners in 1998 was the pe were the people who discovered nitric oxide. It was voted the molecule of the year in 92. So plant-based nutrition has a beneficial effect on the endothelial cells responsible for nitric oxide production. So it is not normally found in legumes, beans, soy, and nuts. And L-arginine is the amino acid responsible for the nitric oxide production which in turn relaxes the blood vessels, platelet aggregation, prevents smooth muscle proliferation, and this is already found easily available in our plant-based diet. And so this is just a nitric oxide production pathway. So at the end, more fruits and vegetables, the better. Increasing fruit and vegetable intake increases endothelial nitric oxide in a dose-dependent manner. And it decreases or mitigates the increase in vascular stiffness depending on how much, how many uh, servings of fruits and vegetables we eat. This is another thing we'll talk about is the advanced glycation end products. This also blocks nitric oxide in the endothelium. All that we know is high concentration of meat and dairy products have higher AGEs compared to a plant-based diet where there is only 100 units per gram compared to 1,000 to 10,000 units per gram. This was another uh, slide that I found very interesting. So this an uh, agent called the TMAO, trimethylamin N-oxide, is supposed to be found in the gut microba. And it has been found that vegetarians and vegans have bacterial flora 
that produces less of the TMAO, which in turn prevents atherogenesis. So there is like more and more scientific evidence how the plant-based diet could be working. So the other thing we talk about is inflammation, low concentration of CRP, better antioxidant status. And today I think uh, many of uh, people were here doing carotid IMT and vegetarian uh, diet has a thinner carotid IMT. So how many, uh, how much fruit and vegetable consumption is needed? Earlier, prior to the last year, it was about five servings of fruits and vegetables. And then this year, just recently published in Journal of Epidemiology in 2017, I think it was a January article, they came back and said eight a day. From five a day, now we are moving up to eight a day is best for your heart. And this was meta-analysis of 142 articles, 95 population studies. So it translates into 800 grams of fruits and vegetables. And uh, compared to people who either ate little or no food, the risk of dying by any cause was lowered by one third and risk of cardiovascular disease death was reduced by about a quarter. And then there are other slides showing mortality in vegetarians and non-vegetarians. But when it comes to, when we look at mortality trials, it's mainly the risk of having ischemic heart disease was at least 25% or 24% lower in vegetarians. But one important thing about this collaborative analysis was lower mortality was observed among younger ages. Because when people are young, they are supposed to be productive and they want to lead a healthy lifestyle. I think they need to learn about this early on in life to know that it's going to help them uh, live longer and an event-free survival. And then this is just from Women and Heart Disease. Rachel K. Johnson is uh, the chair of the American Heart Association's Nutrition Committee. And she endorses vegetarian diet. And this is very important for the AHA and particularly for all cardiologists. They are going to have a healthier weight, lower incidence of heart disease, lower blood pressure, and less hypertension. And uh, we know prevalence of hypertension is 29%. Cholesterol is at least 50%. And the DASH-1 and DASH-2 trial is going to be lots of fruits and vegetables uh, along with low salt diet will help reduce or bring down at least six millimeter reduction in diastolic blood pressure. And then we look at the latest guideline for the cholesterol management, which was published in September 2015. They talk about nutrition and physical activity. And when it comes to nutrition, uh, it's mainly about uh, how much dietary cholesterol. But on top of that, they said additional nutritional therapies is important. A heart-healthy diet alone is not adequate to meet the LDL and HDL goals. You have to have plant stenols and sterols, and they are mainly available only in plants. And viscous fibers, more than 5 to 10 grams, is also available only in a plant-based diet. So I, and I want to conclude saying vegetarians have a better cardiovascular profile, lower total cholesterol, better ratio of total cholesterol to HDL, low C-reactive protein, we talked about less TMAO, lower triglycerides, lower BMI. Uh, we have a speaker on diabetes and lower blood pressure. So I want to say we have to have the prescription of vegetarians wash, uh, or prescription for a vegetarian diet included, which has to be a low fat, less than 10% of calories. Plant-based diet is a viable, very cost-effective treatment. And this should be used in combination with standard treatment regimens including medications and or interventional therapy, which is usually uh, intervention, uh, PCI or cabbage. So this is our American Heart Association diet plate, which shows more than half should be fruits and vegetables, very little starch. And then I think we can take out the meat and replace it with legumes. And uh, nothing, so we have a lot of famous people who are vegetarians. So I want to end up end by saying Albert Einstein's quote, nothing will benefit health and increase the chances for survival of life on Earth as the evolution to a vegetarian diet. And uh, stress management is very important. Uh, and uh, keep a positive attitude and wear a smile. It takes only 22 muscles to smile, but 37 to frown. Thank you.